The holiday season is here, winter markets are open, so I thought it was time to review a fitting knife with a pretty cool Christmas compatible color. This is the limited edition Spyderco Delica with M4 blade steel and mint green handle scales. And just like the year 2023, it's also completely gone, as it just went out of stock. But if you missed it, you should not worry because I'm here to share mine with you. Also, as a bonus, I will show you another Delica that is still available and beats this one in every way you can imagine. Hey everyone, welcome to Salvo EDC. This is my first Christmas special video this year and if you would love to see more knives with a holiday theme, definitely tear up the like and subscribe buttons as they were gift wrapping standing between you and one of your wishlist items. And if you would like to see my coolest knife pictures, come check out my Instagram where I post something nice every day. Now, let's get back to wishlist items, because for me this spider Delica was pretty high up there for a very long time. But I didn't want to rush getting it, as this knife is a true spider legend and its first generation was introduced 34 years ago, several years before I was even born. The current Delica 4 design was released in 2006, 18 years ago. So I was patiently waiting for a special release or an upgrade because VG10 is not really my cup of tea. And when this one finally dropped, well, I did not even notice. Probably I was busy doing something else. Also, BladeHQ is spamming my mailbox so hard that I simply cannot keep up with their emails anymore. I only realized this knife existed when it went on a sale for $89. And the second I saw this Delica, I literally dropped everything, including my jaw, and jumped in front of my computer to get it. Probably this one was my quickest knife purchase of the year. So why is this thing so cool you might ask? Well, the most obvious answer is the blade steel. The less obvious answer is the PVD coating. This knife comes with a CPM M4 tool steel, which is a lot more interesting than any other Delica blade steel out there. Normally this model arrives with VG10, which is a Bowler N690 equivalent super boring steel in my opinion. It's not a bad steel to be honest, it just offers nothing extra. Crucible M4 however is a much different story. This high carbon tool steel has off the chart edge retention on par with S90V or CPM 10 v and it is also very tough. As a trade-off, it is prone to rusting and difficult to sharpen. I leave it up to your judgment whether or not this is a good steel, but I think we can all agree that these trade-offs leaning into extremities make M4 much more exciting compared to VG10. It is also a lot more difficult to come by, to be honest. I did a little research for this video, and if we don't count retailer exclusive M4 drops, at the specific retailers that I like using, we will find less than 30 folder knives, 27 to be exact, that are currently available to purchase with M4 blade steel. And the average MSRP of these knives is way above $300. M4 is this expensive because it is very hard to machine and also because it usually comes with a Benchmade logo. My favorite example is the pretty recent TI bailout which sold out for 600 bucks. In comparison, my cheap knife was a pretty good deal. And I'm very grateful to Spyderco that they always run the extra mile to give us these exotic steels cheaper, even if they are limited sprint runs only. Despite being a limited run, Spyderco took this M4 Delica pretty seriously, because they also PVD coated the blade with titanium carbonitride, also known as TICN. It's very similar to the shiny golden color titanium nitride, it's just a tiny bit harder and maybe a tiny bit more restrained. TIC encoding is also harder than DLC and it produces less drag, which I definitely welcome as I slice a lot of paper. However, DLC should protect the steel from rusting a little bit better. Honestly, I'm very happy to have this titanium carbonitride on my Delica because all my previous Spyderco's came with DLC coding and I was excited to try something special this time. And again, I bought my M4 Delica 4 for $89. Yes, that sentence makes sense. And in my opinion, this is a pretty cool price point to try this pretty cool steel. And so far, I love it a ton. Its behavior reminds me of my Kruger PM2, 
which knife I also enjoy very much. Both steels take a keen edge and they hold it for ages. In comparison, Kruver feels easier to sharpen and does a lot better against corrosion. As an exchange, this M4 on the Delica is a lot tougher. And I really like it this way, mostly because the Delica comes with a super, well, delicate blade with a full flat grind. Another significant detail that I noticed about the Delica is the blade style. If you take a closer look at the tip, you can also discover that the end of this drop point rounds down a bit. This does two very exciting things. One, it peeves up the tip, and two, it makes the Delica more comfortable as it changes the angle at which you hold your wrist when you cut with the knife. I think this blade is a genius design and in combination with the CPM M4 it just became even better. This blade steel makes this full flat Delica grind an even better slicer and this geometry also benefits greatly from the extra toughness. This tool steel also resonates extremely well with the Delica identity because in my opinion this knife was intended as a compact work EDC. This is why it comes with a Ricasso instead of Spyderco's famous oversized finger choil. This way the handle could become a much more efficient finger guard, so you can perform more aggressive cuts with your knife without risking your fingers. All this functionality is also supported by a super strong backlock mechanism, and despite its small size, the Delica still comes with a large enough handle so you can have a full four finger grip on it. But still the knife scales feel super solid and they have absolutely zero flex. All the above makes the Spyderco Delica an amazing overall package that was noticeably fine-tuned for hard work. And I think it turned out great, as this knife is almost flawless. I have just a couple of minor complaints. And no, it is not the pocket clip. I know that I'm all alone with my unpopular opinion, but I think the Spyderco clip is amazing. Especially this one is very cool, since it was quite literally designed around both the lanyard hole and the pivot screw. So in theory, I could swap this clip around and still tighten the pivot if I need to. And that's just so cool. I love the idea behind this clip. And I also like the backlock. Honestly, after so many disgusting liner lock knives I had to test lately, this backlock Delica was a much needed palette cleanser for me. It feels like catching a breath of fresh air. So now that everything is back to normal, I can go and talk poorly about liner lock knives with a renewed confidence. In my opinion, this backlock is super enjoyable and highly underrated, mostly because it's very reliable and also easy to operate with gloves on. It's not true that a backlock ruins the knife's action. My Delica is surprisingly snappy and effortless to flick. The centering is also perfect and the knife comes with absolutely zero blade play. However, it has a super weird mixture of build quality issues. These plastic scales look and behave really weirdly. The most obvious issue is that the backspacer sticks out quite a bit. I noticed it out of the box, but I just let it slide until I realized that these turbo retarded scales are scratching the bottom half of the Ricasso on both sides because the space between them is too tight. So part of my coding checked out after a couple of openings before I could even cut anything. To solve this issue, I will probably end up molding this Delica with flytanium scales and I might also stonewash the blade in order to make the damage somewhat less obvious. But I feel bad about this situation because I did not buy this knife with the intention of modding and I enjoy the color of these mint green scales. In my opinion, they are perfectly textured and also very comfortable to use, so I would have preferred keeping this knife original. I also don't really like that this Delica 4 design is less streamlined compared to my other Spyderco knives. For example, the back of the blade sticks out quite a bit when the knife is closed. It's not really catching into anything, it just makes the knife look one degree less attractive. Look at this Spyderco Para 3 for example. In a in a closed position, this knife looks and feels much smoother. I brought up the Para 3 on purpose because it literally comes with the exact same overall size and exact same blade length. Plus, the lightweight version of the Para 3 also has the exact same weight too. Due to this reason, it makes a lot of sense to compare these two knives 
And in my opinion, the Para 3 provides a much smoother overall user experience. Another general issue with the Delica is the plate to handle ratio. This nearly four and a half inch long handle and the two and a half inch cutting edge do not have the best balance. I think Spyderco could easily level up this knife with a longer blade. Or if I flip this around, I could also show you an MKM Isanzo, which has a very similar cutting performance, but it comes in a much, much smaller package. Now, this is a very old Isanzo version. The new iterations of this knife come with M390 blade steel, and they cost the same as the Delica, between 80 and 90 bucks. And these knives with M390, carbon fiber, micarta, or even G10, are a way better deal than the Delica with these weird FRN scales. But don't go anywhere just yet, because here comes the bonus that I promised. If after all these recommendations you would still try the Delica 4, but miss this limited edition M4 exclusive, I have amazing news for you. There is another version of this knife still available, which comes with K390. And in my experience, Spyderco's K390 is better than M4 in every way you can imagine. Personally, I have a K390 Endura 4 that my friend borrowed from me, but as soon as I get it back, I will make a review for you guys and we will put these two steels back to back each other. If you would like to see that video, make sure you subscribe to my channel with the notification bell on and until that video rolls out, I invite you to watch one of my previous reviews about the already mentioned Spyderco Para 3 or the MKM Isanzo because these two knives are also very cool. Thank you for watching today's video all the way and I will see you in the next one.